we're right in the middle of our, our heart chakra series, or our chakra series. And uh, last week we spoke about the heart chakra. And the heart chakra, of course, is the most important chakra. So I thought I'd spend an, another week speaking about it. Uh, before I get into that, what I'd like us all to do is just to close your eyes and feel into your body and just begin to notice from a place of compassion where you're suffering. So we're just breathing in and breathing out, feeling into the body, and just noticing where you are suffering. Let's breathe a sense of love into this place. Let's breathe a sense of healing into this place. And so you might feel tension, you might feel heaviness, you might feel exhausted. And so we're just gonna breathe a great sense of love into this part of us that's having a hard time. And if you get in touch with your heart, your heart is going to require that you come down out of your head and just feel this warm, innocent presence in the center of your chest. This warm, innocent presence in the center of your chest. And we're just having our attention here. And from this place of the heart, I encourage you to embrace whatever within you uh, feels like it's in pain. Feels like it's in pain. And so, um, continue to soften and to open and just experiencing what's here. Just breathing in and breathing out, feeling, experiencing, and opening. And so I'm going to invite you to stay connected with your heart. And if you want to open your eyes, you're welcome to. I'm going to move into the formal teaching aspects. But for some of you, you might be like, gosh, it's been a while since I checked in with my heart and actually could use some more time and attention here. Either way, eyes open or eyes closed, I encourage you never to leave, to leave your heart, never to step out of your heart, never to lose connection with your heart. That may seem like a tall order, but in order to heal, we have to have a deep and profound relationship with our heart, a relationship that is so deep that we simply know this gentle love and innocence in the heart as the very essence of what we are very nature of what we are. And so, you know, the, the teaching here that uh, I'm going to bring forth today, you know, has to do with the heart chakra opening, the heart chakra awakening, the heart chakra healing, and in relationship to Kundalini. So the, the basic teaching is, is that Kundalini is a force of light. It's a force of awareness. And it's going to illuminate. It's going to illuminate us. And so it's going to illuminate the seven chakra centers and in the heart. If your heart is clear and empty, like empty of pain and suffering, when Kundalini first comes into your heart, you might just feel like a pressure, a heat, an aliveness, a luminosity. You might feel really blissful and wondrous. But <laughs> for most of us, uh, that's not been the case. Our heart's been a dumping ground for pain. And, you know, because of this, when Kundalini shines its light into the space of the heart, we feel a heartache, we feel anxiety, we feel heaviness. We feel like there's something really wrong with me. Something really wrong. And, you know, then it starts actually the journey of healing. And it is true that there's probably something wrong. And, you know, what that is, is one we've misidentified with our suffering and taken it to be what we are. Like if you grow up in a house where 
your mother or father tells you you're no good your whole life, you're going to believe you're no good. And so you will experience heartache. And if you grow up in a house where you're loved and you're supported and you have time and silence and magical experiences, you know, every day of being in nature, and you feel under your heart, you're going to just feel this innocence, and, you know, this like innate goodness, Christ-like energy. And so, for, so again, for most of us, our heart has simply been a dumping ground of pain, of trauma, been a place of misidentification. Because the people we look to for love, they told us basically, you're no good. <laughs> There's something wrong with you, boy, girl, or whatever. There's something wrong with you, kid. And so, you know, then we really have to learn about healing. And so, unfortunately, when Kundalini is flowing through you, it can be a little bit relentless. Some of you might smile when I say that word, relentless. Because the Kundalini is going to basically force you to heal. She's going to shine this big spotlight, you know, on you, like on the place of pain. Like last night, I heard this banging on my wall in the middle of the night. So I got up and I got my spotlight because I couldn't see in the dark. I went outside and it chased the bear away again. Chase it away. And in this situation, I'm going to use my ego. I'm going to make loud noises and chase it away. But in regards to the heart, when this big light comes forward, we can't use the ego. We can't chase it away, our pain. We have to use love. And I'm going to be very practical here. So if this is you, if you find yourself with pain, with tension, with anxiety in the heart, with trauma, the first thing your body needs is it needs to connect to safety. It needs to connect to safety. The second thing is it needs to relax. To relax. And in order to do this, you have to get out of your head. You have to get out of your head. So last night, after I chased the bear away, I did not spend another second thinking about the bear. Chased him away, went back to bed. So right away, I wasn't up all night like, oh my God, a bear. I didn't think about that. I chased it away. And then I went into a state of relaxation and deep sleep. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is because what most people do is when they have trauma of any sort is they think Think, 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 think more, analyze, just keep thinking about the trauma. They replay it over and over in their head. Like I could replay the story of a bear coming to my house, you know, all day, every day, or all night. <laughs> and I'd never sleep. I'd, I'd never heal. I'd just I'd be anxious. And so thinking about pain does not heal does not heal. And so we have to step out of thought. You know, some teachers call this our story. To step out of the story. And what I encourage us to do is just validate. Like validate the basic facts. Don't think about it, but just validate. When you validate, you know, validation happens with a deeper, a deeper, fuller breath. It gets you in contact with your heart, with your belly, with your inner strength. So when you've experienced trauma, we validate it. We say, oh my gosh, that was terrible that that happened. That shouldn't have happened. It was very painful, very painful. And so I want you to imagine putting a period at the end of that sentence and just acknowledging it was very painful. And then we take a deep breath and we feel the pain directly. Now, almost no one I know does this. They say that was painful. And let me tell you why it was painful. Let me tell you how painful it was. Let me tell you how many times it happened. Let me tell you how this should not have happened again and again and again. Or, you know, they'll spin off in a different direction of just avoiding the pain. Let's see what's on the internet. Let's see what I can buy on Amazon. 
oh, let's check out this new video game, whatever it is. And if you do any of these types of things, if you avoid or you distract your pain, this healing journey of the heart will take, I'm going to use this word, forever. <laughs> It'll take a really long time. A really long time. And if you're lucky, after a long period of time, you'll start to get angry. And the beautiful thing about anger, the therapeutic thing about anger, is anger tends to be an emotion we can't avoid. Like people who have anger issues, who go to like anger support groups, they're like, I'm so angry. I see, I see that I'm like losing my mind here. I see that I have to let this go. And so that it becomes very apparent that they have to face it, that they can't stop it. It's very hard to stop anger. But with trauma or sadness, it's actually quite easy to stop it. Like people stuff it, they swallow it down, and they walk around the rest of their, their life kind of hating themselves or feeling like kind of sick or nauseous or, you know, feeling like they don't belong here on planet Earth. Whereas when you do this one simple step, you validate this thing happened and it was so painful, period. And then you drop directly into the feeling. And so this is Tantra. So you feel the hugeness of the sadness. You feel the hugeness of the heartache. You feel the hugeness of the trauma. And for most people, if they make it this far, They'll feel the hugeness of it for five seconds, 20 seconds, maybe 35 seconds. And they go, nope, that's, that, that's too much. I'm going to go with my story in my head and just, because it's a lot easier to think about it than to sit with the pain and the sadness of feeling something like hysteria. Like just, just tears where you're totally falling apart. But again, if you want to heal, you have to go directly into the pain. And it's important if you did the first two things I said, which is you've connected with a sense of safety and you've relaxed the body. And I want you to hear me clearly about a sense of safety. You never ask your egoic nature if you're safe, unless you're in a war zone or a real dangerous place <laughs> where there's actual danger. Actual danger. So when I'm rock climbing, I ask my ego, am I safe? Actually, I ask my gut. My gut just tells me, no, you're not safe. <laughs> you need to put some more protection in this, you know, these rocks. Are, if you're going to fall, it's going to hurt. Well, my ego will tell me, my gut will tell me. But the reason I say you don't ask your gut, if you, I'm, I'm sorry, you don't ask your, your ego, your mind, if you're safe, is because when you've been traumatized, your mind has created a belief that I'm never safe ever. Someone hurt me back in 1986. It was a man. So I can't trust men ever again the rest of my life. Whereas what I'm going to invite you to connect with is to re reality. You ask reality, am I safe? Yeah, I'm sitting here alone in my room. I am safe. I'm safe. I'm so safe. I can actually feel what's within me. I can feel it. I can experience it directly. And I'm going to give, you know, this teaching about mammals. It's a funny thing about mammals. It doesn't matter if you're a dog or a cat or a mountain lion or a human being, a newborn or an elderly person. If you have sadness within you, and that sadness has been stuck for a long time, the way we heal that sadness is through feeling it and letting the body shake and or cry. We let it cry. So like I, I saw this movie once on, um, it was like SeaWorld and they were basically stealing baby orcas. And the mothers, like the mother uh, orcas who had their babies stolen, they would cry and they would grieve for like three months or six months. And this is how they heal. This is how they let go. Let go of this great pain they experience of having their baby 
kidnapped from them. And so there is no other way to heal if you're a mammal. If you have great pain, you have to feel the pain fully. And as you feel it, you're embracing it with love, unconditional love. And I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine my little girl hurts herself. If she comes to me and she's screaming and she's sad and she's hurt, I'm going to pick her up, I'm going to put her in my lap, and I'm going to rub her back. I'm just going to let her know, Daddy, see her, I love you, it's okay. But if I was in my head saying, oh my God, this is so terrible, you really hurt yourself, you're not going to heal, this is going to go on forever, you're going to have this pain forever, my child is, is going to be traumatized, traumatized by the adult in the room, by her father. And so I'm, I'm going to totally disconnect from the story. I'm not going to shame her. I'm not going to tell her she did something wrong or bad. I'm simply going to hold her and rub her back. I'm going to breathe into her while she screams and slobbers and has mucus. That <laughs> she wipes on my shirt. And see, we need to learn this same skill with ourselves. Where we disengage from the story. We admit with validation. This was painful. I'm so sorry this happened, period. And then we breathe fully and completely into the pain. Fully and completely into the pain. When you do this, you actually fall in alignment with your divine nature. The kundalini gets very happy because you're actually learning what kundalini wants you to learn, which is unconditional love. Because unconditional love is an aspect of true nature. It's an aspect of true nature. It's a massive quality. It's an essence, the fabric of true nature. And, you know, the beautiful thing about the heart chakra is it plugs into all seven other chakras. And they're all kind of piping in. And, and there's so much that has to do with trust and being open and being strong and being courageous. And... You know, so the heart chakra is a unifying force. And so if there's a shadow in your heart, if there's a shadow in one of the other seven chakra centers, again, like you're never going to fully understand what love is, like true unconditional love, if you're not also connected to strength, if you don't believe you can heal, if you don't believe that you're God, if you don't know that what you are is good. And so the thing that the heart chakra invites you to do is not just the healing work in your heart. It invites you to do all of your healing work. All of it. All of it. Because again, the heart, we're waking up to unconditional love. And that means it's through in and throughout. Unconditional love. It's hard to experience unconditional love if you're not connected to strength. It's hard to be connected to strength if you don't know about your power. You know, if you trip over an addiction or if you have negative belief systems that you're a no good, rotten person. So anyway, so I'm looking at the time here. And again, like the heart chakra teaching is a teaching that unfolds over the good part of a lifetime for most people. And so I want you to watch, you know, watch your mind because the other game that a lot of people try to do, this is a shadow, is they try to not get in touch with their heart or they don't know how, because basically it all, if you wanna be in touch with your heart, all it comes down to is a total willingness to feel. If I was gonna be a good Buddhist, I'd say, a total willingness to allow totally what's here, to experience totally what's here directly. And what a lot of people do is instead, they try to manufacture love in their head and love aspects of themselves from a place of ego. And this won't work. Of course it won't work. Love is what heals. Love is a willingness to be with. Most people make the mistake that love is a warm, fuzzy emotion. And 
you know? <laughs> That's what emotional love is. It's warm and it's fuzzy. Is it ultimately blissful? Yes. Is it ultimately radiant? Yes. Is it ultimately luminous? Yes. But love is the power to sit with hell, to sit with pain, to sit with that which is overwhelming. It's the willingness to feel fully and completely. Fully and completely. Fully and completely. And so the great question for all of us on this path is do we trust in love? And are we at least willing to discover love and make it a lifelong journey? Or do we trust in our egoic nature? If you trust in your egoic nature, you'll be lost in samsara the rest of your life. You can never shift out of ego and into love, into truth, into spaciousness. If you believe in your ego, first and foremost, we have to shift into the heart. And what that actually means is we have to be willing to feel and experience without turning away. And that will be very uncomfortable for most of you. But in the, dis in the discomfort, you discover a love that is unconditional. 